Hey friends, it's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping in today. I'm back with a new layout for the Paige Evans design team. And I want to apologize in advance because I have a very sore throat. So I sound pretty bad, but I feel okay. Um, but I'm going to be using uh, Paige's banner cut file. This is part of her 20 days of autumn cut files. And I went ahead and cut it on some textured white card stock. And then I have a couple papers here that I picked out from the garden shop collection by Paige Evans. And I have these two cute pictures of my page standing out by all of the green flowers and leaves and things on our patio. And I thought they would be cute for this cut file because I had the idea of exactly where I wanted to put the photos. And you can see where I tucked them in kind of right there in the middle of this banner. And originally I wanted to use that white pattern paper with the dots but I really like this periwinkle pattern paper. So I went back and forth, thought, well, do I wanna do a lot of mixed media or do I wanna use a color background? So I decided to go with the periwinkle. I just think that's so pretty. And then some other ideas started flowing um, with some other colors that I thought would be pretty with this blue color. So the periwinkle paper is paper number 22. And then I'm gonna back the banner part of this with this really pretty, orange to pink ombre pattern paper and that is paper number 11 and I haven't done this in quite a while with cut files but I'm going to back it and one of the easiest ways for me to do that is just to trace the area that I want to back right onto the paper and then cut it out slightly larger than the lines that way you have room to glue it behind the cut file so uh, I picked the exact part of this paper, cut it out, and then you can see it's going to fit right under there nice and neat. And then you can just go and erase the lines. And you could also flip it over and trace it on the back side of the pattern paper if you didn't want to have to deal with the pencil lines, but it's not that big a deal for me. Uh, but I like these two colors together. I like this pink against the blue background. Um, you know, I tend to go for white backgrounds most of the time because I love doing mixed media backgrounds and just kind of creating my own thing. But sometimes I want to use a pattern paper background, uh, you know, and there's still ways to jazz up pattern paper backgrounds. And I'm going to do that here in just a little bit. But this blue color was just so pretty. And it's such a nice neutral color that matches with so many of the other colors in this collection, the pinks and the yellows, just very, very pretty and soft. So I went ahead and got the three parts of the banner cut and you can kind of see what that's gonna look like. And I'm just gonna have the cut file kind of right in the center of the background there. But then I thought where the banners kind of loop, um, I wanted it to look a little bit shadowed. So uh, I'm adding a little bit of a darker gray gelato here and just kind of blending it with a little bit of water in my finger just on the areas of the banner where it's it's you know you can kind of see there where the banner is kind of looping back under and it's supposed to create this little shadow effect kind of like the inside of the banner and it's a very subtle thing but I wanted to do it because I like the effects of shadowing and you don't even have to do anything um dimensional for this you know sometimes it's just about adding a little bit of color can create the illusion of dimension and depth so that's all I'm doing here is just adding a little bit of dark area to that spot or those spots and it's just going to be a little bit of a, a detail sometimes the smaller details make a big difference and you don't even realize why until you know you you look at it a little bit longer but at first glance you may not notice it um, so I'm gonna very lightly glue the pieces that I cut out now I'm only adding a little bit in the middle because I want the edges of the actual cut file to kind of curl up and not be glued flat to the pink so you can see how I'm doing that it just again it's another way to create some dimension and depth by not gluing everything completely down flat, but you still get the effect of it. So I'm really liking how this is looking already. Um, and I think this is gonna go really nicely with my pictures because in my pictures, I have a lot of green 
and yellow. So I wanted to pick two main paper colors that did not have green or yellow because I knew that my photos were going to just scream green and yellow. You know, I mean, there's a lot going on as far as those colors go. So for my background, I'm really only going to use white. And this is different for me. You know, I'm always usually about all the colors. Um, so this is what white gesso can do. Um, I'm just going to start to dab it down and then use my little acrylic brush there to scrape it around and then see what it looks like with the cut file back on top of it and then I'm going to do it again and the thing with the pattern paper like this and the white gesso is you got to work fast or it's going to dry and it's going to look exactly how it is when you touch it to the paper so this is where your fingers come in sometimes you got to use your hands and just smudge 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 because I don't want it to look lined or like a, a brush stroke. I want it to look like this hazy, cloudy fog. I'm just trying to kind of lighten up the area around the edges of the cut file. So it looks like I'm making a big old mess and ruining this paper. But a lot of this you're not even going to see because when I put the cut file back on top of it, you can only see a little bit of it see the difference there so sometimes your backgrounds look like a hot mess like oh gosh you just ruined that paper but it sort of becomes this magical thing when you put everything back on top of it and you can kind of see there how that's going to look and so far I like it um, I am going to add some white splatters because I'm just going to stick with white and this is white acrylic paint and I, I like to use white paint for splatters instead of gesso because it's thicker and it's going to dry a little bit uh, more of a, of a solid white instead of a hazy white and it's going to splatter a lot easier. It's a lot thinner than the gesso. The gesso is really thick and the white paint is just great for this. I add a little bit of water and you can get all different sizes of the splatters depending on how much paint you have on there and how you splatter it and sometimes if you use your fingers to kind of slide down the bristles you can get a nice big white splatter so um, you can see the effect of that I love that you can let it dry by itself and it's going to look a lot more uh, of a bright white if you want to soften it up and make it look a little hazy kind of roll your paper towels over it right away and then you can just keep adding layers you know that's the beauty of this is just you can keep adding as much as you want here and there see how it looks and go for it now, if, if at this point, I was considering adding some color on top of this white gesso, but the more I looked at it and the more I, um, you know, brought the cut file back on top of this white cloudy area, the more I just, I liked the way it looked with the white. And I felt like it just sort of enhanced the whole pastel effect of this. You know, I wanted this to be light. I didn't want to overdo it with the color. But yeah, I like how that looks. And so I think I'm just going to leave it white. Um, I do want to pop up the whole cut file. Again, this is another way to get dimension and depth and to make it look a little bit more textured is to pop up your cut file or pop up your photos or your embellishments. And um, I like to have some things flat, some things popped up. And it just gives this really fun effect of, of 3D and things looking um, like there's some shadow to it you know just it gives it some depth and it just brings it to life for me and my taste and you can see there how the edges of the banner are not glued down so it automatically creates this fun little shadowy effect which I love but I didn't glue it so much to where I couldn't tuck the photos in there because I am going to layer those and tuck those in there and then I'm going to start to work on embellishments. And I felt like flowers were perfect for this because there are a lot of flowers above and below the banner area. And then I love these daisies. The white with the yellow centers were perfect. And then I went through the floral die cut pack and I only had three of those. But I thought, oh gosh, I need another daisy down at the bottom to kind of continue this theme of these daisy flowers. So I tried a couple other flowers to see how it looked, and it just was not working. Um, and I was 
going back and forth with what I was going to add, if I was going to add any other colors to it. But then I remembered this pack of the layered dimensional stickers, and there was one of these daisy clusters on that. So I'm going to use that down at the bottom, and it's going to work out. So then I have this daisy motif kind of going from the top, the middle, and the bottom. And it all worked out. But I did want to add some more flowers, and I went back and forth thinking, do I want to add in more colors or do I just want to kind of stick to the pinks, the yellows, and the blues. And so I thought I would just kind of keep it basic. So I cut a few of these periwinkle blue flowers from a pattern paper. I think that's paper number two. Um, you can see all the different colors there. I mean, you have so many color choices. Um, and I layered those in took some time off and played around with some more leaves that I cut, or flowers and leaves that I cut from this paper, from the six by eight paper pad. And then a couple other leaves that I cut from paper number six. And just kind of scattered them around, layered them around. I did cut a couple of those small pink flowers. Um, and I like how this is looking. You know, I just, I went through all the flowers, I went through all the leaves and just played around with placement and um, <clears throat> this is where they all landed. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of white tissue paper for a layer behind my photos because I didn't wanna do a whole bunch of pattern paper behind those because I feel like they kind of stand out enough already because of the, the stark color differences between all the green up against the pink and the banner. They stand out. And then I'm just gonna start to glue down these flowers um, like I said earlier, I'm going to glue some of them flat down, and then some of them I'm going to add a little bit more of the adhesive foam under there to give some dimension. And I love these leaves that I fussy cut. They're perfect um, because they're easy to glue down and they're easy to bend and kind of curl the edges up, as are all of these flowers. And the green leaves, most of the green leaves are from the floral die cut pack. A couple of them I did cut out but um, they're perfect for layering and they're just so easy to make floral clusters with because everything just goes so nicely together. And um, yeah, I, I was really loving how everything just complemented the photos really nicely. And I do add a little bit of foam underneath the, the top picture here and then the other one um, kind of tucks right underneath it. And I put the photos in this order because if you look at the photo on the right, she's looking toward the left and in the the main photo she's looking right at me and so i know i said this a bazillion times but i always like to have my photos kind of angled to where it looks like they're looking at something so the photo on the right it looks like she's looking at the photo on the left it just gives the people in the photos something to look at you know even though they're pictures in my mind that's in my mind <laughs> that makes sense um, I'm using scotch tacky glue I know someone might wonder what kind of glue I'm using it's the scotch tacky glue and it works great in that bottle all I'm doing here is adding a bit more foam underneath the big flower cluster chunks at the top and the bottom because it was kind of sagging down and um, you know you can't even see the foam because of all of the the leaves that I added there and I didn't want to cover up all of the the cut file parts where the leaves and the sprigs are sticking out I just wanted those kind of peeking out from behind the die cuts and things and so I left that visible and then I went back and forth about what color thread I wanted to tuck in here underneath the photos so I tried the pink at first and I wasn't really digging the pink I don't know. I mean, I love that color pink. Don't get me wrong. But for some reason, um, once I got it there, I thought, I don't think that's the right color. I think it's just too much pink. So I'm going to trade that out. But I, I wasn't sure until I tried it. It looks okay, you know, because it's pretty subtle. But I think I like another color better. But I leave it there for now. I go with yellow over here on the left. And I like how that looks. Yeah, I removed the pink and go with the yellow in that area too. Because there's not as much yellow as there is pink. And sometimes, you know, you can do too much of one color. So I'm going to do the same technique 
just pull out the thread and this is just regular sewing thread from Walmart it's nothing fancy or special um, I just like it because it adds some texture and some little pops of color and it just kind of looks like this little chaotic mess of thread you know and I guess that's what it is but I don't know why I like it I just do so here's what I've got so far you can see how things just pop off the page not too much but enough to give it some some interest and some texture and the cut file there like I said curling up off the edges of the pink paper and then now I'm gonna go with uh, okay what are we gonna do for a title obviously I don't have room for anything large so this paper to the rescue I love this paper um, you can get it in the uh, 12 by 12 paper pad or paper by itself is paper number 23 and there are a gazillion titles to choose from so I picked a white one because I wanted to keep it light it says absolutely the best in gr light gray and it was the perfect area to glue it right there in the middle kind of underneath that main photo there and then I sort through the eight by no the eight by how about the eight page I was gonna say eight by eight paper pad but that's not even right there is no eight by eight paper pad the eight page sticker book and this little yellow beautiful sticker was perfect for a little detail um, yeah this paper uh, I can't even talk straight anymore this sticker book there oh is perfect for the tiny small details because at this point all the big stuff in this layout is finished here's that same paper from the six by eight paper pad if you want even smaller titles so I cut out a little teeny tiny one from that to add in somewhere I'm not even sure where it goes I think I do it above that do I do it above that picture yes I do so there's plenty of options for small details because you know once you get all the big stuff done then you're on the hunt for the small things and so that little sticker book is perfect for that I do add in some blue thread up at the top and you know this didn't even really need to be done because in the end <clears throat> excuse me you can't even really see it but I just kind of wedge it underneath there for a little extra pop of blue even though it blends into the background again it was just something I thought I would try and see if it made a difference or not um, I tried it on top of the cut file and then decided to just kind of wedge it back under there and you can kind of see it in between those those leaves and things and I do it down at the bottom also just a little bit peeking out and this is almost finished um, I really like how light and soft this turned out um, and, and obviously this is a a fall cut file because some of the leaves in it are fall shaped but this is definitely not necessarily a fall layout you know I live in Florida so we don't even really have fall so um, you know despite there being a lot of fall items and images in this collection it still leaves room for summer spring everyday type of layouts because I mean like I said I don't really get to make fall layouts because Florida does not participate in fall maybe like one or two days and then that's it so I don't have all those classic leaf changing colors and all that fall stuff so I had to kind of work with what I have and this collection is still perfect for that um, the last thing I'm gonna do is add in some lines for my journaling and I'm using a white jelly roll pen here because I'm just going to stick with the light and white theme here and that is going to finish it up it's hard to read here but I can read it in person but here comes the final image of the finished layout but that's it I really like how this turned out I'm glad I stuck with just white on the background I feel like that's an easy way to make a mixed media-esque type of background without you know having to dig into all your paints and and your sprays and things and it was perfect for this this background because it uh, I feel like that's all it really needed so I hope this inspired you in some way or gave you some ideas to maybe try on your next layout or card or project or whatever you like to make and uh, I'll link down below where you can get this garden shop collection and pages 20 days of autumn cut files there are uh, or there is a new one being released every day up until the 20th so make sure you keep an eye on her Facebook group and her blog and her Instagram uh, where you will be able to see each one each day with 
a couple of different samples of how to use it. So thank you guys so much for stopping in and for watching. And I hope to see you again in my next video. Thank you so much.